Hi, my name is Louise, and I make projects combining fashion and engineering. In this video, I show you how I made a life-size version of the 2021 Holiday Barbie, complete with a full-length ball gown skirt and a 3D printed corset to go on top. This isn't the first Holiday Barbie I've made. I made one back in 2019. I couldn't find the exact candy cane striped fabric that I wanted, so I ended up making it myself, stitching red and white ribbons together and a silver trim for sparkle. I skipped making Holiday Barbie in 2020 because that year just didn't exist, and I skipped right to 2021. I bought the Holiday Barbie so I could get a closer look at what she was wearing and to, of course, take the final photos with. She has a ball gown skirt and bodice in a silvery fabric and a plastic corset that snaps together. To start, I went to my local fabric store to look for a silvery fabric to use for the bodice and skirt but couldn't find exactly what I wanted, so I layered a transparent snowflake fabric over a silver satin to give me the holiday vibes I wanted. I also got laces and a silvery tool for the shoulders and waist details. I started on making the bodice first. I outlined the shape I wanted on my mannequin and draped my pattern with muslin, pinning and marking the seams as I went. Taking them off the mannequin, I adjusted the patterns to my measurements and added seam allowance. I then cut out both fabrics from the pattern and stitched each piece together with a quarter inch seam allowance. This makes the two fabrics easier to work with. I sewed all of the panels together with a half inch seam allowance and left the left side seam open where the closure will be. I then added Velcro for the closure. Did you say Velcro? Yeah, it's what Barbie used. Okay. I then cut a length of Velcro and attached them to each side of the side seam. I made bias tape from the silver fabric with my nifty bias tape maker to finish both the top and bottom edges. Barbie had this strap and tool combo for the sleeves, so I cut out the length of elastic I needed for the straps. I created a channel a little wider than the elastic of the snowflake fabric and put the elastic in to create these ruffled straps. Now to work on the skirt. I took a rectangle each of the transparent snowflake material and silver satin and set out to gather them. Since I shared my pleating machine on TikTok and Instagram and people were pretty excited about it, I wanted to try and incorporate it into one of my videos. Except I had a really hard time getting the double layers to work as the fabric gap in the machine isn't that large and I ended up breaking two needles. So I won't be sharing a success story for this machine in this video, but I'm working on a machine series where I share the machines that I have and how to use them, and then I'll make a garment with them. The first video in the series will be with this pleater machine, so if you're interested in this machine and want to see how it works, make sure to subscribe. Back to the project at hand, I went ahead to gather the fabric with two straight wide stitches next to each other. They're then tied at either end and pulled to gather the fabric, but sadly it failed again. I think I'm trying way too much fabric, especially with the double layers, and it just keeps breaking the thread. So I gave up on that method and cut an elastic to my waist measurement and sewed a channel in the top of the skirt. Easy peasy. To finish the bottom edge, I wanted to give it a horsehair braid hem. It's supposed to give a fabric a wavy structured finish. I stitch it to the skirt hem at the top and bottom edge. Here is the before and after of adding the horse hair, and you can see the wavy hem just a little bit. But I think the weight of the fabric is affecting the exaggerated hem that horse hair typically gives to lightweight fabrics. I then gathered some tool and added it to the waist and shoulders. Moving on to the 3D printed bodice, I've done body scans for a few projects now. The first time was when I made my first 3D printed corset a few years ago, and most recently when I used a scan of myself to recreate the Tom Ford breastplate. I used a scan of my size 10 mannequin that I scaled to my measurements. 
It didn't need to be my exact shape like the breastplate video I made, since I'd be wearing a top underneath. In Blender, I started with an oval mesh to define the waist and worked upwards to create the bodice shape using the mannequin scan for reference. I then added the material that dipped down from the front waist. After getting the shape to where I wanted it, I cut a gap in the back and added in eyelet holes for lacing. I then cut the bodice into pieces for printing. The bodice was printed in five parts, two for the breast cups, one to extend past the waist, and the two back pieces. I had an elaborate plan to epoxy and sand the seams, but I found that I was crunched for time and duct tape did the job. The front three pieces are attached permanently together, and I designed the side seams to snap together, just like Holiday Barbie. I added a snap fit across the entire side seam, but an error in the print curved the line of the front panel and it was difficult to get the entire connection to latch, but I had a plan. I cut the giant snap fit into two smaller snap fits by using a saw blade, then my snips to get rid of plastic, but my snips had enough and they broke while doing this. I remembered I had my Dremel around, so I grabbed that and went to town. I should have started with my Dremel to begin with. After all the troubleshooting and assembly, I laced up the back to finally try it on. To complete the bodice, I needed to add detailed stones and sparkle. I 3D printed hundreds of spheres and shapes to adhere, but once I placed them on and took a step back, the bodice was honestly better without them, so we threw them in the failed print pile, which is getting pretty big at this point, and I'll be able to re-extrude it into a recycled PLA spool that I can use for non-cosmetic parts. Fun fact, PLA is a thermoplastic and can be remelted and re-extruded a few times and Barbie wouldn't be complete without her accessories. I designed her silver bangle and 3D printed it with the same shiny filament I used for the bodice. I even printed her spherical earrings, super gluing earring posts to the flat side. And here's the final look. Thanks for watching and make sure to like this video and of course subscribe if you enjoy fashion and engineering projects. Bye!